Hello there. In this video we're going to demonstrate how to uh, create a global variable and in this case it'll be an entity um, that we will initialize at the start of the application um, through a query. Um, so as a query as the application spins up we're going to execute a query get a specific instance of uh, uh, that entity and assign it to the entity that we have defined in our application. So what we're looking at here is a very simple light switch application which has a, a Northwind data source and a number of uh, screens associated to it. And, and this particular application is a doc shell application so if we were to look at the um, properties that go behind level, solution level, whoops, wrong one, it's uh, properties of the application rather, what we'll see is that we are uh, uh, we have the doc shell extension and we have the shell set to soft landing doc shell. So with that said, uh, the first thing you want to do uh, is create your global variable. And so the way that you do that is you go into your view application code. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to create an entity based off of the tables orders tables from the data source Northwind uh, data. And so we'll just make this a public um, type order and let's just call this some order and that's basically it. So this is an uninitialized entity called some order um, that will be available across the application because we've assigned it or defined it within the partial class for the application itself. All right, so that's that done. So the next piece is, is that we will flip over from the logical view to the file view and we will go to our initialization um, area. So Basically, in our client project, we've created a solution folder called DocShell. And in that solution folder, we already have a model. Um, so if I was to double click on this, it will open up our model. And you can see that it's a standard uh, DocShell model. And you can see here we have our uh, light switch screen for customer list detail, with some administration screens, and our order options uh, area. And those correlate to the navigation groups that are defined in the light switch application. For more information on um, building and managing models within DocShell, there's uh, plenty of videos on our website. So if you just want to go and check that out, um, you'll learn more from it. So that's what's inside our solution folder for our model. And inside uh, another solution folder we've created called initialization, we've added this uh, initialization extensions class. And as you can see here, this is a very simple um, partial class. Uh, basically this application initialization extension this is actually code generated for us from our model uh, through this t4 template and inside this particular um, file here we'll be able to locate um, the public partial class definition for application initialization and if you look down further down you will see that um, we're actually um, calling the virtualized virtual uh, initialize method here um, when the shell is initialized and so what we're doing um, in our initialization extension is we're creating another um, partial class of the same type in application initialization extension and we're overriding the initialized uh, method and here you can see how we're assigning the um, the variable itself so um, what this will do is it will um, uh, basically run a callback um, to um, uh, execute this query on the server and in this case here we're looking for a very specific order of, of with an ID of 10.0.248 just so happens to have one in there that's why we're using it as this example and you can see here that this is that variable that we defined earlier in our application uh, so this is some order right so if we go back to our initialization code you can see some order and you can see that IntelliSense works fine, and you, there it is. And so, um, as mentioned, this code is um, actually going to be an asynchronous callback. So um, this is why we need to ensure that it's uh, wrapped inside the dispatcher um, as we're doing here. So this is the application.current.details.dispatcher. And then this way we can uh, um, successfully pull the, uh, or assign the value that comes back from the, from the uh, asynchronous callback. And all we're doing here is we're just uh, putting a break, uh, debug statement out to show that. So let's run this now and see what happens. Okay, so the application is starting up. So 
what we should see, uh, with any luck, is we should see the application first, and then sometime shortly after, the callback um, comes through. And um, you know, if we just let this run through, um, we go and view our, let's see, our output. Uh, somewhere in our output, we should actually see the ID that was uh, returned. There it is, 10.0.2.4.8. Okay, cool. So um, let's now add a bit of logic to, um, we'll take that breakpoint off, and we can close these windows here. So close all these, and let's go to our Solution Explorer. And now let's flip over back from our file view to our logical view. And let's go and add a command to our orders list detail screen. And so what we'll do here is um, just add a new button and let's say we'll call this one show orders, show order, yes, or sh let's say show global order, uh, global order, there we go, all right, and what we'll do is we'll just double click this, and so um, just like before we can go um, system, dot uh, debug or actually just do it this way debug dot right line and we're just going to print out the order ID equals and we'll just do it this way and application dot some order dot order ID something like that and we'll put a breakpoint on that so that we can know that we got there we hit save. And now what we want to do in Doc Shell is we want to um, pull that into our view and maybe put a different icon on it or something like that. So we go back to our file view. We'll just give our compile client a quick compile. And then once that's built and saved, we will open up our model. And then we'll just simply go to our down to our orders screen. So this is the screen that we added it to, orders list detail. Right click and refresh. This should pull in the command itself. And there it is. And so let's put a properties and we'll just put um, um, an icon on there. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Well, first of all, we'll put some text on here. It says uh, show global order. And let's see. I think we can just use the default. I think it's a star that comes out for that. Anyway, so let's run this and see what we get now. Okay, so the application is starting up as it did before. All right. Let's click on that. So now if we click on the orders options tab, and click on the orders screen because that's actually where the command is that we just created. What we should see is we should see the command uh, show up here as a star and if we click on this you can see now that it's taking us to uh, our debug statement and if I was just to step through that um, actually over highlight you can see that we do have our sum order um, basically with our values in it and here is the uh, information that was queried at the initialization of our application. So there you go. So there is our um, example where we are creating a, um, a global variable uh, in the scope of the application and making it accessible uh, within other areas of the application, in this case in the orders list detail screen itself. Um, and uh, um, so for additional information on uh, DocShell, uh, please visit www.softlandingcanada.com. Thank you and have a great day.